We welcome you here at the Technical Forum at the Group Exhibit Hydrogen and Fuel Cell 2013. Please have a seat, have a free drink. Come, you are really invited to listen to the next presentation and ask some questions at the end. Come and enjoy here with us the next presentation by MyTech, dealing with the topic Hydrogen Internal Combustion Engine and Hydride Tanks. Your presenter is the founder and scientific advisor, Mr. Dominic Perrault. Here, give him some big hand, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. So I charge a little bit my talk, the title of my talk today. I would like to speak about metal hydride storage for internal combustion engine, but also for uh, fuel cells. So, uh, as you know, uh, there is a free main method to store hydrogen uh, with different topic with different kind of problems so first and the well known is a compressed gas uh, uh, with high pressure up now to 700 bar and uh, this use uh, provides some mechanical problem it's okay. so there is another method uh, which use a metal hydride so we call this method solid storage. And uh, in this case, you get some trouble with uh, uh, temperature. And the last one is a liquid storage where you got some trouble with uh, cryogenic problems. So my tech works on both first uh, with, mechanic with uh, compressed gas and with solid storage. Here is an example of the product we, we develop. So we develop uh, type 4 uh, tanks with uh, polymer liner and with uh, uh, carbon structure around. And for instance, here you have a 20 liter inside. And with this 20 liter inside, you can store about uh, here, for instance, uh, uh, 800 gram of hydrogen, 500 gram of hydrogen and, and less, less with 200 bar. So this is a class of uh, storage systems. We develop, and this is the main part of my topic, we develop also a hydride, uh, a solid storage system using metal hydride. So uh, we, uh, we have two kinds of solid storage, one with uh, uh, internal cooling and heating system, and one without. So here is both system, and the main difference, of course, with both system is the pressure. Here, for instance, for hydride, for hydride we use, we can have uh, about two bars uh, at 20 degrees, and we refuel all the tank at 10 bars. So, uh, before speaking about uh, the use of uh, hydride, I would like to, to show that also the difference that we have uh, when you use a compression or when you use an hydride. If you start when, uh, uh, for instance, a one kilojoule of hydrogen, at 10 bars and you want to get this same kilojoule at 700 bar, the compression process uh, need to use about 120 joule, so 12 percent. So, of course, this level of energy is depending on the pressure you want. Of course, you have to pay for this energy. You store the hydrogen, but you have to pay for this 12 percent of energy just to for the compression. After you, don't, you have just to, to dissolve, to, to use uh, the, the, uh, the storage. Uh, with metal hydrides, the system is quite different. First, you can imagine that uh, you have a, a sort of uh, bottle. In this bottle, you have uh, intermetallic materials and you have hydrogen. And you start the process of uh, absorption, dissociation of hydrogen molecule and absorption. So you, you at, at the end, you obtain here what we call an hydride, okay? So, and of course, you get again a small part of the hydrogen around this hydride. This hydrogen is at roughly two bars, okay? It's depending on the, uh, the hydride, of course. But during this process, you have a heat generation. So in this case, when you start with uh, one kilojoule of hydrogen, at the end, you get one kilojoule at two bars, but you get also 120 bars. So you have to uh, extract this heat from the system if you want to store your hydrogen. 
So this is why we develop a, a sort of a fast uh, drilling system in order to extract the heat of the tank. Okay. So and now just to, to make some comment, when you you compare the, the capacity of your hydride in different temperature, you will get some uh, uh, some temperature some pressure. Of course, you get the lower pressure for the lower temperature. And if you represent this on this drawing, you have here the pressure and here the inverse of the temperature. You have a slope here. And this slope uh, indicates, gives uh, an information about the level of energy you have to, to, to extract from your system. So there is uh, plenty of uh, uh, hydride materials. Some of them are able to work at room temperature and also at a pressure not so different than the room pressure. So this is the target zone for my tech. We, pr we work with materials using in this kind of uh, pressure and room temperature. So in order to change this, uh, to, to be able to manufacture this material, we, you can adjust the composition of the hydride and by using a, a sort of oven, you are able to produce this hydride with the right composition. So for instance, for uh, uh, the hydride we use, we want to work with a pressure under 10 bars we consider that our system will be able to work for outside temperature between minus 13 and plus 16. We have around 80 grams of hydrogen per liter of hydride. And also, of course, the flow you can obtain from this tank is very depending on the nature of the hydride and the pressure. So you have to manage the energy when you use the system. And here it's an example, I have two examples. Here is an example of a project we develop, it's a European project, we develop with several partners. It's what we call Mobi, Mobi Post project. So in this September there is 10 cars like that for the postmen in order to, to, uh, to make the same job that they use today with uh, electrical system. But the problem with the electrical system is the autonomy. So with uh, uh, such system, the, the postman ex expects to, to, to be able to have a, a better use of the, of the car. So in this system, uh, use, this system uses fuel cells. It's a range extender system. This system uses fuel cells. And here you have two tanks with hydride because the postman doesn't want to have a high pressure tank for, for, for this kind of application. So they prefer to use a low pressure tank. This is why we propose to use a hydride tank. And this hydride tank is just behind the, the fuel cells. And so the, you, you have to manage the heat uh, between the fuel cells and, and, the, and the tank. For instance, in this project, MyTech is in charge of all the fuel of the storage system from the station to the tank. Of course, you have to take in, into account the refueling. So during refueling, you have a production of heat. And do, during the head unloading, you, 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 you need heat. So what's happened in this case? If you imagine that you need one kilowatt of electricity, because the fuel cell has about 50% of efficiency, you will get also one kilowatt of heat. With this one kilowatt of heat, you lost, or it could be used for something over, you lost 750 watts and you need 250 watts for your tank. So you keep from this kilowatt about a quarter, you inject this heat in the metalliadite tank and with this heat you maintain the temperature of the tank and with, when you maintain the temperature of the tank, the tank is able to provide to you 13 normal liters per minute. Okay of H2 and with this 30 normal liter of uh, hydrogen you will get again one kilowatt and so on and so on. So another example now with a combustion engine. So it is this is a lawnmower that we developed for the city where we are. So it is a lawnmower with a, a combustion engine. The engine is about uh, 10 kilowatt uh, and so we, we use a hydride storage for the same reason, because the gardener doesn't want to have a, a high pressure storage. So uh, this uh, lawn mower, you can see at, on our booth at uh, B51. 
So in this case, uh, it's roughly the same. So you can imagine it's a four-stroke engine. You have the engine here. You get hydrogen. You get air. Okay. You have the combustion. At the end, you get a hot steam. This hot steam go outside. And here you have a cooling circuit. And from the I don't remember the name in English. Sorry. Uh, from the this box that we have on the lawn mower. Uh, you, you are able to heat the cooling system in order to get the hydrogen for the, uh, for the engine. Here is a small video of the engine. I would like to say that uh, this spring is not a good time for, to cut grass because uh, you can see my colleagues, it's close to zero degree. So we take this video before li leaving. You can see it's close. It's not a, it's not a good season for, for, to cut the grass, but you can see how the, the performance of the lawn mower. So it, it's a classical lawn mower. The nose, uh, uh, you, you, we, we get no CO2. Uh, because we have a combustion, we can get some NOx, okay, but much. Uh, not, not, uh, not a lot of uh, NOx are produced by this kind of uh, system. Okay. So we develop also a small one for uh, everybody. So this small one, you have the noise. So you can see, it's, uh, it's uh, roughly the same. It's another kind of tank that we have developed for this application. And here we inject directly the steam inside the tank. And so we have a very good heat exchanger. You, you don't have any cooling system, just the steam through the tank. So that's all. So you are able to visit uh, our stand and uh, you are welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Perot, for this interesting presentation. So the audience, you have now the opportunity to ask some question or make some remarks. Is here anybody? Yes, okay, I will come to you. Thank you. My name is Theo Holtem and my company is Green Hydrogen Consulting. And I would like to ask uh, about what you said there. Um, I think 80 grams of hydrogen per litre of hydride. Yeah, roughly. Now, in the, obviously outside we can drive hydrogen cars. They might have uh, four kilograms in a tank. Um, so, in comparison, I mean, that's, uh, that would be uh, 50 litres then of your hydride? Yeah, yeah, roughly. H how many kilograms does that weigh? What, how, does it so, so how does it compare, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Well, yeah, one of the problems uh, of the hydride is the mass, you, you're right. The mass is, uh, if you compare the performance of the hydride storage system, the full hydride storage system, not only the hydride, if you compare the, the tank of hydride to, co to a high pressure tank, I would like to say at 700 bar, you can get 4% uh, of hydrogen compared to the mass of the tank for uh, 700 bar uh, tanks. And f with hydride, you have 1%. So you have roughly four times uh, time, um, more with more mass. Okay? So, yeah. So, if you want to store one kilogram of hydrogen, it's roughly uh, 70 kilogram, roughly. The full system, including tank, including so. So that, that's a problem for. So this is why this kind of of system, I think today is not possible for a car. It's possible for some application, but not for all. And, and uh, uh, but. but uh, for some small application where the mass of hydrogen you need is not so high, you don't need five kilograms for the postman, for instance, hydride can give you some, some a part of the solution. Not all, but a part of the solution. And the advantage you at this refueling station, you don't need a compressor. So you have just... Uh, ah, sorry, it doesn't work. You, you have just uh, the... The, for instance, the electrolyzer, you have a buffer from the electrolyzer and direct to the, to the tank on board, no compressor. So nothing is perfect. The problem with the mass and problem of heat temperature is, is one of them. It's a balance, it's depending on your application. Today for a car, 
I think it's not yet possible. You have to charge of the technology. So does, yes. I think another problem could be the purity of the hydrogen or the requirements on the purity. If you have a compressed gas, the requirements are not that high. But if you have a hydrogen storage, the, uh, if, if you look at the lifetime, yeah. if you have, uh, yeah, if you look yeah. at the lifetime, it, 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 it you have some constraints yeah. you, there. You, you, you're right. There is also a problem of, uh, of purity, of uh, quality of the hydrogen. So here you, you, you need to use hydrogen with very good quality. Uh, okay. Uh, for the fuel cell also, you need to, 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 to get uh, hydrogen with not so bad quality. So uh, uh, the purity, the, the quality of hydrogen you need here, it, it, it's, it's of course a problem. But now with the electrolyzer we have, uh, it works, it works. So uh, you, we, we, we are able to use for a, a thousand cycles, thousand of cycles, the, the, the same hydride. And uh, after, when it doesn't work, you, you, you have to reactivate the hydride. So it's, you have to pump, to, to, to use a vacuum, to, to make a certain uh, treatment, but it's not, it's not to destroy. Yeah. You, Uh, in these um, the hydride systems that you are using, um, what is the expected cycle life with uh, charge and recharge cycles? 3,000. 3,000 with good quality of hydrogen, for, for 9 and 5. Okay, thank you. So, does anybody just uh, make some remarks anymore? No. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Perot. Just being here. It's your big hand again. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, like written here at the flat screen, Mr. Pirot is the whole week here at the group exhibit Hydrogen and Fuel Cells at the booth 5051. Oh, sorry, 51. So, after a short break, we will continue here with the new the next presentation from Proton Onsite with the topic Long Life PEM Water Electrolysis Stack Experience and Future Directions. Thank you very much. <laughs>